What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic CM. It's episode number 6, uh, returning today with the season finale as you wrap up season 1. Uh, we know now European football is officially impossible to attain, but we can cement a top 10 finish with back-to-back -back wins. So let's see if we can get it. Both our games are away, starting with Aston Villa at Villa Park. As we go for the three points, which I think, I think with a game to go, because we've got a game in hand, that'll guarantee top 10. Let's see if we can get it anyway. Come on you Charles. Well. Wow. This has been awful. <laughs> this has been awful. You know, I often talk about this sometimes towards the end of the season where there's nothing to play for for a club. They're sort of on holiday mode. Do you know what I mean? They're not They're not really playing at the same intensity. The results obviously don't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Yes, there's a potential for a higher or lower league position, but really nothing, nothing of great magnitude at stake. And the, the season sort of already fizzled out. Do you know what I mean? The, these games sort of have like a, a friendly, pre-season friendly sort of vibe to them, you know. This has been absolutely awful. And I'm going to call it now. It's going to finish goalless. There's, there's basically been no shots in the game. This has been one of the worst games of FC I've ever played. My word. I think there was zero shots on target in the entire game. You know, there was an injury for Tyler Adams towards the end, and he is now done for, well, the final day, but also the start of the new season as well. So that three-month injury that will rule him out for, I think, the first game of the new season, that, that's always so frustrating, you know, when you've got a player going down, and you know, yeah, the season's over this year, but he's he's, he's going to miss the start of next year as well. Tyler's up two races. I like him a lot, man. I like him a lot. Two assists, eight clean sheets, can deploy him either right back or CDM as well. And uh, whilst it was the first game of next season, he's still going to be an important piece of our, uh, our ball of scene going forward. Uh, so on the final day, what can be decided? I think Man City have already won the title. Yeah, 11 clear of Liverpool is theirs. Uh, top four is basically confirmed. All Arsenal needs to do is draw against Everton. Fifth is Chelsea's. And we could see West Ham leap for Crystal Palace, but really... It's it's unlikely. Palace need to win. West Ham need to lose. Well, to be fair, that is actually quite likely from the fixture list there. So all we need is one win. Win the final day away against Chelsea, and we guarantee a top ten finish draw. And that might not be enough, or it might well be. I guess we'll see. And as for the bottom three, well, we've got quite interesting there. Burnley and the Blades are down, but three teams could go down on the final day: Luton, Wolves, or Brentford. So final game of the season. Let's see if we can get that top ten finish. A win guarantees it here in West London. Let's follow. Uh, let's f finish strong. With the three points and top ten guarantee, come with you, Jarvis. Easy, easy, easy. Oh, Cole Palmer drills it in, and the Blues have the lead. They, they need to add his celebration, his signature celebration, like to his player as well. They still haven't done that yet. It's it's March now, um, because Ice Cold has just got his fifth of the year. I tell you what, what a player he is. You know, and I, I I did see that when he when he left Manchester City, he, I, I think he said he wasn't he wasn't like. Not, not, he wasn't sold on leaving, but I think he said he wanted to stay. But he knew moving to Chelsea would get more game time. Pochettino's had a lot of faith in him. And I think you've got to give Poch a lot of credit for his development this year. He, he has really, really shown just how good he is as a, uh, as a young English talent. I know Poch has come under fire this year, but I think his development for a couple of individual Chelsea players, Palmer in particular, has, has been evident. His influence on those young players has been clear to see. I think that is one reason why I still believe Pochettino is a good fit for Chelsea. Um, obviously coming under major criticism this year for the inconsistency and the Carabao Cup final loss, which a lot of people uh, say they're kind of, kind of choked a little bit, if you will. Obviously the tagline that Gary Neville threw out was the billion pound bottle jobs, which I again think was really, really harsh, but still. There is an element of truth to that. Um, but his man management skills are phenomenal, uh, Pochettino. And I think with, with so many young players at Chelsea as well, that can be integral to a youngster's development. You know, having a coach that believes in them and a manager that gets them, you know, not just as a player, but as a person as well. I think you, you can see the the quality and the, the skill that Pochettino has in that aspect, which makes him, again, in my opinion, a really good fit for the Blues. And I hope they do stick with him even after what has been, let's just say, a season which hasn't gone exactly according to plan. Even so, Solanke back at Stamford Bridge with the level of Bournemouth with the equaliser right before the break. If we, if we can fail to lose this game, fail to lose, if we fail to lose this game, that's going to be only one defeat in our last, I think, seven games to end the season off. Why couldn't we have this sort of form when we were still in the hunt for Europe? And there we go. It is indeed going to be a point one loss in seven. So to say we stopped the rock, but does that mean we finished top ten? That's the question, man. I, I would have said for this season again that the best we could have hoped for was sixth or seventh. But if you'd offered me tenth or ninth come the start of the season, 
I don't say I would have bitten your hand off, but I certainly would have shook your other hand and say thanks for it. That would be a good finish for us now. Yep, it's a solid finish for Bournemouth in the end as Man City once again win the title uh, with the top four being Spurs, Liverpool, Arsenal and Chelsea uh, as well. Spurs had a real resurgence this season uh, after struggling early doors. Uh, Chelsea, Manchester United and indeed it was Crystal Palace uh, making up the top seven in the end. Glass has gotten far in, in his first full season it seems then uh, with the top ten in the NBA West Ham. Hey, the Cherry was born with getting over season high and a, uh, yeah, a club high 15 draws draws in the Premier League this season as well uh, to finish in ninth with 51 points. Only 11 defeats in 38 games, 46 goals conceded. That, that's pretty strong, but only 44 goals scored. Yeah, not, not great. And definitely for next season, I think it's safe to say if Solanke does leave, we'll need to replace him because he was responsible for the majority of our goals. We didn't get many from other sources. In the end, the bottom three was indeed Wolves, Burnley and Sheffield United. So, yeah, the Clarets and the Blaze back down to the Championship and Wolves under former Cherry Manager Gary Neal also going down to the Championship. Is it just me or do Wolves always get relegated in the first season of Greenwood? I swear it happens in all of my saves. The Golden Boot in the end was won by James Madison. Rejected. Looney Tunes, if you've not seen that TikTok, by the way. <laughs> It's one of the funniest things I've seen in the past year. Um, Dominic Solanke was top four in goals, though. 18 and 36, averaging one in two. And again, I don't think we'll be keeping hold of him uh, for this summer. I'm sure big clubs are going to come calling. And if they do, if Champions League sides come calling, with us not even in Europe right now, I won't stand in his way. Uh, KDB won the assist title. I never understand this, though. I never understand this. It must go on alphabetical order, which is ridiculous because Tav got 10 and 31. He should have won the assist title, not KDB. Uh, which which going to assume we're just going to assume that he did indeed win it because he did it in fewer games so to have our top creator this year and Sinistero was in there with seven in 17 as well with six in 23 and as for the golden glove in the end NATO and Edison split it with 12 in 38 I don't know what will be the determining factor there but yeah NATO and Edison combining for uh, 24 clean sheets to, uh, with uh, eight, uh, together but 12 apiece in the first season the player of the season interestingly enough went to Luis Diaz and as for the team of the season well we have got Rips how on earth has Kirk has made it in there? I don't, I don't remember him doing anything spectacular this season. We did get a team of the season representative, Kirkes. Really? Sorry, I just want to, I just want to see this because I, I don't remember Kirkes having like a phenomenal. I mean, listen, he was good, but I mean, three assists, twelve clean sheets, thirty-eight games. I mean. He grew three ratings. To be fair, he's only just turned 20 as well. So as a young player, that's that's pretty impressive for his first year in the Premier League. But I, no, well, okay, fair enough. Like, I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it. But it is still a surprise regardless. Still, we'll take it. As for the other competitions this year within England to start with, uh, the Carabao Cup, of course, we were knocked out in the last 16. And in the end, Manchester City beat Newcastle on penalties to win another one of those. I think they've won more EFL Cups than anyone else in the past decade, I think. Oh, my goodness gracious me. What have I just seen? Sorry. Uh, what have I just seen? I haven't actually got to this date yet, but... Okay, well, we're, we're going to play through that one together and see if the U's can pull off the greatest shock of all time. It's Chesnoy Gaming in my uh, in my career mode because it feels like it. He's got Cambridge to the final. Oh my god! They knocked out three Premier League sides and Birmingham City on the way there as well. Wow. Okay. Uh, well, we're gonna we're gonna play through that one together. But uh, to start with, as we see, ah, oh, there we go. You play around sound. Oh, it's Knight. It's the Giant. It's Nicholas Knight. He's getting a pro deal based on the height regard. Who is what? Where's he come from? I don't remember putting this guy in my academy. <laughs> it's his jokes. It's his jokes. Where does he come from? Did I put him in my academy? I might have done. I can't remember. Um... <laughs> This is jokes. Nicholas Knight's getting a pro deal based on a height alone. I've wanted a giant for so long, man. So long. Um, we, we're going to quickly skip through because we're going to see the uh, the winners of the, uh, the, the the Europa League and the Conference League. Starting with the Europa League, where AEK Athens uh, have won the uh, what you call the Silver European competition, if you will. It's Bronze Conference League, Silver Europa League and Gold Champions League. It's, uh, it's AEK Athens winning the Europa League beating Benfica in the final. Right, here we go. Let's do it. This is it. Have they done it? No! <laughs> they came so close. Brentford winning the FA Cup, beating Cambridge 2-1 at Wembley. Oh, that's gutting. That is... Oh, I would love to have seen that. I've never seen that before, man. 
Never seen that before. I've, I, I've, seen, I've seen a League 2 side get to the semis before. This is way back in FIFA 15. I remember it, and they got to the semis, and I remember I knocked them out with, uh, was, it, was it with West Brom? I think it was West Brom. But, uh, oh, that's gutting. That is gut. Fair play, though, man. What a run that was. And sorry, Cambridge fans, forgive me. You're League 1, not League 2. But you will be League 2 next season in the same after relegation there. Uh, as for the Conference League, as you'll see last year, of course, we had an English winner uh, with West Ham. This year, we had an English finalist, but they ended up runners-up to Frankfurt. That's their second European honour, I think, three or four years, man. Eintracht Frankfurt going for a resurgence. And as for the Champions League, I'll show you the full competition, including the groups as well, that I totally forgot to show midway through the season, but who made it through and who were knocked out in the group stages. For those curious on the group F, it's, uh, it was the most interesting group this year. It was Milan and PSG through, and Newcastle United and Dortmund getting knocked out uh, this season. As we'll get into the knockout stages here, and to the last state, and then to the semis after Real bested Man City on penalties. The holders... Well, the most successful team in the competition's history have got their 15th altogether beating Inter in the final. Run from it, dread it, but Real Madrid always arrive. So some other leagues around the world, starting with the Championship where Leeds and Leicester bounce back to the Premier League and the Saints might join them as well. The playoffs include them, Coventry, go on Millwall, come on you Lions, and uh, West Brom in sixth as well. Um, I, pro I promise I'm not going to replay the season to get Millwall up, but I'd love to see it. Come on, man. I thought it was supposed to be a realistic career mode. <laughs> what can I say? Full season Neil Harris, man. We can do anything. Uh, Blackpool and Derby are up to the championship with the players being Charlton, yeah, Barnsley, uh, Fleetwood Town, and uh, Barnsley. Do you know what? I actually don't mind Charlton. As far as rivals go, Charlton are probably my favourites, if you will. <laughs> And as for League 2, uh, Stockport County, Notts County, and Forest Green Rose. And the playoffs will be Mantletown, uh, Wrexham, uh, Colchester, and Gillingham as well in the fourth tier of English football. Charlton are a great side for a career mode, by the way, especially for a rebuild, trying to bring them back to the Premier League, London side, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, PSG, uh, League and Champions, uh, shock, horror, no surprises there. Probably won't win it now in real life, but Bayern do win the Bundesliga in the save. Four clear of Leverkusen with Leipzig and Dortmund wrapping up the top four in Germany's top tier. Inter Milan, champions of the Serie A, most likely to happen in real life as well. Uh, with Milan, 12 points behind, Roma in third. And uh, Lazio in fourth in the Serie A this season. PSV, Eredivisie champions. Are they going to win it undefeated in real life, man? It, it, not long to go. I'm, I'm watching the Dutch top tier with a close eye right now. I would love to see them do it. Benfica on top in the Liga Portugal with Braga in second. Sporting third and Porto in fourth in this year's Portuguese top tier. And as for the Premier League, well, if you remember in the Almeria Crema, we were stunned when Aberdeen split the old firm top two. Normal service resumed here. Uh, Rangers four clear of Celtic. And like I said before, I know uh, the season's not officially finished. It's the first phase, if you will. But just like playoffs, you can't you can't see the, the second phase, if you will. All, all you can see is this, which is really limiting. But uh, you just have to assume that the team that were on top in the first phase after 33 ended up winning the championship as well. Real Madrid might have won a Champions League, but not a league in the European double finish three points behind Bars with Sevilla in third, splitting the Spanish Big Three uh, and Athletic Madrid in fourth with Bilbao and Sociedad, the Basque boys, in fifth and sixth. Uh, we'll do a couple more. Turkish Super League, Besiktas, champions this year with 93 points in 38 games. Fenerbahce and Galatasaray uh, wrapping up the top three in Turkey. God, I want to go back, man. Seriously. Two years ago, it's Turkey. I want to go back so bad, man. Fingers crossed. Maybe I'll get a chance to this year, if not next. And as for the MLS, we, we sort of just started here, but it's LAFC who have jumped out to an early lead. One point clear of into Miami uh, with both East and West conferences here and uh, also have two games in hand as well. There you go. That's the MLS. God, it's 29, 29 teams. I thought it was 30. Oh, are they getting an expansion team? I, I thought it was 30 in the MLS. And as for the academy, I don't think we'll be seeing anyone ask for pro deals now outside of Nicholas Knight. No one else is 18. I know Phillips is 18, but... Uh, the, the, the best prospect, no doubt about it, is this Welsh fullback. For a while, it was Noah Antoine, but this kid looks the real deal. He's only 15, but he's already 63 overall. We're getting those defensive stats up and that defensive work going up to high as well. 89-94 potential. He probably won't ask for a pro deal for, I'd say, at least a year or two. He's a special talent, this lad. He is a special, special talent and a long-term successor, I'm sure, for Max Arams and Adam Smith at right back. But a couple of great French youngsters there, including Noah Antoine and Hugo Gillet as well. And I, I, I must have added this guy in by accident. I don't remember putting this guy in. I don't remember doing this. 
when I, 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 I he's gonna stay for now, but I don't know what he's doing in line. He's way too lowly rated. Listen, I say it all the time. Sometimes you can change a player's position and they'll become really good and have an overall spike, but um, 36 overall, that's just way too low. And so as we take one final look for the squad at the end of season one, I, I, I've got to say, I love how it stayed realistic. Yes, we added Jack Clark to the team. Yes, we sold Jango Otara and Darren Randolph as well. But other than that, no movers. We kept the team realistic, the same team we're seeing in real life. Again, for the most part, uh, outside of Otara and Randolph leaving and Clark coming in. But this is what we wanted to do. Keep it realistic. And I like it, man. I, li I, li I like it a lot. We had some injuries this season. We had a small squad as well. But again, because we weren't playing in Europe, because we got knocked out of the Cups early, it didn't matter in the end. We don't need a big squad with that being the case. But for the new season, definitely, as I'll run you through the score statistics here for, for, for season one as well, I, I, I'm already thinking we're going to need a new striker. Like Dom, Dominic Solanke, I'm sure, is going to go. NATO will need a long-term success for the Brazilian. I don't know where he's going to start showing signs of decline next year, but it was joint top in clean sheets this year, so I don't think we need one for next season. But for season three, we probably shall look for one. I'd say for now, we can keep him for the next season as our number one. But yeah, he's he's one season away from being one season away from being done, I would say. Uh, Milos Kirk is one of our better young players this year. Up three ratings to 78 overall. And of course, team of the season as well. Uh, Hungarian, really bright spot for our season this year in his debut season at the Vitality. Lloyd Kelly, as we know, is going to be staying for next season after signing a new contract. But I promise if I do get some bids from, again, either Liverpool, Spurs, Newcastle or Juventus, the four teams that are linked to him in real life right now, I'll let him go in the summer on a cheap transfer. Actually, just really weird what happened with Lloyd Kelly. I can't believe not a single club put a bid in. And then they did, and then he got injured. It's fate, man. He wants to stay. Uh, Methan will probably go in the summer. He grew to rank 73 overall, but hard to get him to game time, even with the injury to Kelly we had this year. So... I'm not against selling him in the summer. Uh, but Senesi and Zabani, they were, our, they were our duo this season. And they were both okay, I'd say. I felt better with Zabani in the team. He got an assist as well for a Dominic Solanke goal. And 10 clean sheets as well. Up two rings, 77 overall. And he's only... 21 years old as well. So he's still such a young player. Definitely long term, I see this guy in the heart of the back line. I'm not sure about Senesi. He also grew a rating and he's 27, so he's still young as well. But I think the stats speak for themselves. I was more comfortable when I had Zabani in my back line. I'd like a new partner for him for next season. If not in the first 11, then long term as an LCB, if you will. Uh, Nicholas Knight can't take potential yet until he gets 60 overall, but I'm going to add him to the low list and try and get him out for the new season for some growth. Uh, Smith has got one more year left in this deal after this one. I won't be extending it past that. He's 33 years old. My fingers are crossed that he'll look to retire in the summer and then he can have one final year with Bournemouth. He's been here for 10 years. He's the longest serving player, so I don't really want to push him out of the door, but hopefully he'll decide to retire at the end of next season and that'll be his final season for us next year. Fredericks, by the way, only three games. I'm letting him go. He's, he's going to Fulham on a free transfer, so yeah, that's uh, that's his final year of us. Totally fine with that. Max Harris grew three ratings this year, though, man. Eight, uh, eight clean sheets, sorry, in 26 games. Didn't offer anything on the offensive end which was quite surprising because he's very good going forward but defensively it was actually pretty solid to be fair he's quick he's got great energy we are training those defensive stats as well and at 24 years old still getting better up 3 to 76 overall I don't think he'll ever hit the heights he possibly could have done in his early years at Norwich, but he's turning into a solid Premier League right back, if nothing else. Uh, Tyler Adams, injury towards the end of the season, but still grew a rating. The American International, 25 years old. I like this guy because he's so versatile, man. 78 overall now, kept him on balance. When you look at this guy's stats, he, he can play anywhere. Maybe not as a striker, but as a right back, even fitting in a CB as a small ball playing defender, could probably do the job there. Because of the fact he's got 80 jumping, but he's quick. I like him at right back. I like him at DM. He's going to be an important long-term piece for us, I feel, even at now 25 years old. Uh, Sinistera was good before the injury. Six assists and two goals in 23 games. Did get an injury uh, midway through the season. Sort of hampered his development, if you will, but still a really, really solid first year with Bournemouth. And for Tav, he was our top creator this year with 10 in 31. And he got a goal as well, so averaging a direct contribution to a goal in every three games. Up two ratings, still getting better at 25 I see this guy to me though being more of a CAM I, I see him more as a CAM than an RM and this year I sort of split the game time for him as a winger and a CAM as well for the new season I think I might convert him to CAM T Tav's very versatile he spent time playing wing back he spent time playing CM to me I do see him as more of a central based player even though he's quick and he's got good technical ability as an inside forward or a natural winger I don't know why I just see him as more of a CAM 
I don't know, Bournemouth fans, that's blasphemous, do let me know. But I just I just see him there, to be honest. I see him more as a, uh, as a creator through the middle. Uh, Harry Trey is coming back from Napoli for next season. Whether he'll stay long-term or not, I guess we'll see. Grew a rating out there in Naples, and I'm not sure if I'll keep him for the new season or sell for the profit. Jack Clark, though, I called him signing of the season. He was the only sign of the season. But what a signing it was, man. 10 goals and 4 assists in 35 in all competitions and in the Premier League that's where he excelled. Eight goals in 31 and four assists as well. Up four ranks to 78 overall. We knew this kid was a talent we bought him in from Sunderland. What a steal for £12 million. He's already had his market valuation doubled. He's a heck of a player and I would not be surprised if a big comes in from a big club in the summer. Can we keep him? I'm not too sure, but for a first season, he was absolutely sublime. Uh, Jaden Anthony, 24 years old, grew a rating with Leeds out on loan at Ellen Road this season. I'll probably cash in and sell in the summer. Joe Rothwell at Southampton as well. Probably going to sell him in the summer. Don't have much need now at 29 and 73 overall. The Great Dane, only one rating overall increase this year. 27 years old now. It's not going to get much better, but he was solid for me, man. He came up big in some big games as well. Five goals and two assists in 36 games. Really consistent. Played the majority of our Premier League games and 11 and clean cheats as well. This dude is a giant. This dude is physical. This dude reads the game well and he's technically brilliant as well. There is no negative to this guy, man. And hopefully, we won't get a bid in the summer from a big club so I can keep him. I really, really like him, man. He is solid, I feel. Great player in this team. Lewis Cook, as we know, is going to join Brighton in the summer. Totally fine with me. 27 years old. One of those young players just never developed. So totally fine letting it go because we've got better younger talents in the same position. Namely, this man, Alex Scott. Two goals and three assists in 28 games. To me... Whilst I did play him as DLP in a lot of my games, I think I think really it's it's wasted him there. I am improving those defensive stats, and they're not terrible. They're not terrible at all. I do see him possibly being a box to box, but I think really he's better further forward. So once he gets a high defensive work rate, I'm going to convert him to CAM. It'll only take him two weeks to become one. He's not the quickest, but he's got great passing stats, excellent dribbling, great agility, and 85 balance, which is such an underrated stat as well to me. Yes, he could potentially be a box-to-box -box based on these stats, but I, I, I think he's wasted deeper, in my opinion. You need to get this guy a third You need to unleash him to get the best out of him. So once he gets a high defensive work rate, I'll convert him up to C. A. Um, we've got two lads out on loan there at Easter Road with Hibernian. Uh, Ryan Christie, I'll probably sell in the summer. He's still got another two years left in his deal, three years even, but I'll probably sell in the summer. 29 years old. I like his energy. I like to bring him off the bench in later games with a high stamina, but... Yeah, I'll probably sell in the summer. Don't have too much need for him, to be honest. Remain, though, solid debut year for us. Two goals and two assists in 26. Uh, did have a couple of knocks here and there, but I like him. Converted him to, uh, from right mid to CAM. Played him there the majority of his games, and I like him a lot, man. Technically, absolutely excellent with the Travailer, with the Flair as well. Yeah, really solid with four-star skills as well, and I still see him being part of our team for at least another two years. Uh, Justin Cliver, only the one rating increase. He's never going to hit the heights he first showed when he was such a young wonder kid in the era of ease, but he grew a rating 78 overall, 25 years old, still plenty of time to grow. And whilst he wasn't great in the first season, it's just it's just hard to get all of my offensive pieces in the team at the same time. You know, he was he wasn't as bad as those stats suggest, in my opinion. A couple of goals, got me an assist as well. He wasn't terrible. He wasn't terrible. Antoine Semenyo uh, might sell in the summer. Not sure what his ceiling is. Yes, only 24 years old, but I prefer him more as a backup striker, to be fair, as opposed to a winger. But even so, not sure he'll be here for next season. I guess we'll see. David Brooks is coming back from the Saints. Whether we keep him or not, I'm not too sure. We'll think about it in the summer. I'd like to keep him because he's a uh, he's a fan favourite for all he's been through. Every neutral will love David Brooks for the resilience he's shown throughout his career due to the cancer. But whether he stays long term, I'm not too sure. And as for Jamal Lowe, I know, I know so you'll be thinking, what are you going to do with Mr. Jamal Lowe? He was a Swansea legend for me in that save earlier this year. I'll probably sell. He's 29 years old. He's, he's had his icon save. All, all, all of my icons, they only really appear in one save. I think when he comes back from Swansea, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to let him go. Same with Kiefer Moore. But for Dominic Solanke, that's the big question. Will he stay? Will he go? 18-36, averaging one in every two, plus three assists as well. Listen, I'd love to keep him. I'd love for him to stay as our number nine. He's an absolute baller. And donny has got him firing in real life. I've got him firing in the save as well. But... If a big comes in from a Chelsea, from a Liverpool, from a Spurs, I promise, is there a European side? 
I won't stand in this way. The question is, would a big come in or not? Well, that'll do it for today's episode of the Realistic Career Mode and the end of Season 1 as well. So a big thank you for watching the finale and the whole of Season 1 too. If you've enjoyed it, then please do drop a like. Uh, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode coming tomorrow with a brand new season, our second year at the Vitality, aiming to rebuild this form of team, realistically, <laughs> very soon.